Welcome to the Chairman's Perspective Podcast. Welcome to the Chairman's Perspective. I'm Mark Billingsley, Chairman of the Shelby County Board of Commissioners, and today we're going to have a really good show. Linda Phillips, who is the Administrator of Elections here in Shelby County, is going to join us today. Linda, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. We're going to talk about lots of things. We're going to talk about the history of elections in Shelby County. We're going to talk about some upcoming elections. And we're also going to talk about voter machines, something that lots of people are talking about. So we'll be right back on the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. Jazz, America's own original musical art form. When did it start? Who were and are some of the major players? How do you distinguish what kind of jazz you're listening to? We talk about the great and lesser known artists, songs and tunes, the instruments and the social impact jazz has had on world culture since its beginning at the start of the 20th century. Riffin' on jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Welcome back to the Chairman's Perspective. We're going to have a great show today. I'm Mark Billingsley, Chairman of the Shelby County Board of Commissioners. And today I'm really honored to have a friend in with us today, Shelby County Administrator of Elections, Linda Phillips. To tell you just a little bit about Linda, she began her tenure as Administrative Leader of the Shelby County Election Commission in May of 2016 when she relocated from Lafayette, Indiana. She's been a lifelong voter and has never missed an election. She uh, believes that voting is the most important thing anyone can do because of their fundamental rights as Americans. So again, it's such a pleasure to have Linda with us today. We'll tell you more about her background. She is very experienced. She's been really working in elections her entire career for over 30 years. From the time she was a, a poll worker in Tippecanoe County in Indiana. Did I say that right, Linda? That's right. Uh, Up until today, where we are in the midst of some upcoming and very important elections. So again, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, Linda, again, I I barely hit on your resume, but you're highly qualified uh, to be our Administrator of Elections. I know this is a heavy, busy time for us in Shelby County. In 2020, I understand we'll have three elections. We'll have the presidential preference primary and county primary in March, and then we'll have the county general and state and federal primary in August of 2020, and then we'll have the general elections in November 3rd of 2020. What? How many staff do you have that work on this? Uh, I heard today from you that you had an enormous amount of uh, people that are registering to get to prepare for the upcoming elections. But tell me a little bit about your position and the team that supports you. Well, I have a wonderful team, and we couldn't do it without them. Um, We have 17 full-time employees that work year-round, and then we bring in between 40 and 80 temporary employees, depending upon the election. We'll employ 214 people for early voting, And then on Election Day, we'll have anywhere between 1,200 and 1,600 poll workers. So it's a big operation, and it takes a lot of people to pull this off. You know, it's a a big election for a fairly small staff. I I know over the years that uh, we've struggled to get poll workers. Is that a challenge now, or do do you need people to apply to be a poll worker? Uh, Well, it is always a challenge to get enough poll workers, particularly Republicans. Uh, State law requires a balance of poll workers between the parties at the polling locations. And it's sometimes hard to get Republicans in some areas, and it's sometimes hard to get Democrats in some areas. Wow. Is it right that you only have to be 17 years old and a resident of Shelby County to be a poll worker, or makes you be 18 years old? Well, we do hire high school students. Um, If high school students are interested, um, we actually appreciate high school students' energy. That's great. So, uh, so they can apply. Mm-hmm. and They can um, go to shelbyvote.com, and under the poll workers tab, they'll find an application. And there's so much information on your website. <laughs> so if I'm interested in, in really, honestly, anything elections, going back to the history of our elections, to being a poll worker, to getting respective dates, what's the website address it's for that? shelbyvote.com, S-H-E-L-B-Y, V-O-T-E dot com. And yes, there is a lot of information on there. I was really surprised uh, earlier today, before we got on the show, I wanted to be a little bit prepared, and I read that our very first recorded election in Shelby County occurred on April, in April of 1827, April of 1827, and the voting occurred at the courthouse on paper ballots where actually constituents wrote out 
the name of who mm-hmm. they wanted yeah. in that election. Yeah, pre-printed ballots weren't a thing until the after the turn of the century. That is amazing. And then in the early 1900s, pre-printed ballots were first used. Votes were tallied at the courthouse. That's right. And then in 1950, many were calling for Shelby County to use some sort of mechanical voting machines as it took nearly 40 hours to tabulate the previous results. Have, have we? <laughs> tell me, tell me, Linda, that we've come a lot farther than the 40 hours it took to tabulate the votes in the past. Oh, yes, we've definitely come much farther. Um, you know, but there are people that want to know at 7.01 all of the results in Shelby County and our polls close at 7. So just be patient. We'll do them as fast as we can. <laughs> well, in 1986, the county purchased new voting machines, which were the first electronic electronic mm-hmm. devices. That's hard to imagine because that's a, around the time I graduated mm-hmm. from high school, which it's been a while, but wasn't that far there, long ago. And then in 1998, we went to touch screens recorded, which people call them the DRE machines, and we purchased those for early voting. And now it, it sounds like Shelby County, uh, the County Board of Commissioners and the Election Commission is looking at a new opportunity for people to vote. And yeah. so t- can you share with the audience why it's important that we invest in new voter machines? Well, our current machines are at the end of their lifespan. Um, you know, they've been great machines. They're accurate. But they are at the end of their life. So we really do need to replace them. We've got a, we've put out a request for proposal to certified manufacturers and we've gotten some responses, and those will be evaluated by the team. And you'll be hearing from us in a couple of weeks about you know, how much money we actually need. I understand. You're listening to the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazuki Network. I'm honored today to have Linda Phillips, who's the Shelby County Administrator of Elections, with us. Um, the machines that we currently have, Linda, were they are were they purchased back in 2006, the ones that we currently use, or when was that? Yes, I believe it was 2006. So we're u- literally using uh, an electronic device that is 14 years old. Yeah, I don't think very many of you have the phones that you were using in 2006. <laughs> well, you know, that was my point the other day when you and I were talking about things, and I thought about what would a cell phone have looked like 14 years ago? or They were kind of brick-like. I had one. <laughs> yeah. They were pretty big, and or can you even imagine a computer that is 14 years old now? No. But that's really where we are with our elections. So right. um, my understanding is uh, the persons that will ultimately decide what machines we uh, use are our – share me share with okay. me. It's your, it's your board it's of – It's the Shelby County Election Commission, which is a board appointed by the State Election Commission with input from the Shelby County representatives and senators. Uh, Those five people will make the decision about which system we will use. Now, it's not that they have a whole lot of choices. You know, under Tennessee law, we have to use equipment that has been certified by the Federal Election Commission and has been certified in the state of Tennessee, which really does not give us a whole lot of choices. Right. Well, we're going to be right back. This is a great conversation today. We've got a number of elections coming up. But we're talking with Linda Phillips, who's the Administrator of Elections here in Shelby County. She's very well experienced and ready for these upcoming elections. So we'll be right back on the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. Hey, I'm Williams Brack, co-host of Grind Set. The insight you gain from us and our guests will motivate you to take the leap into entrepreneurship. Make sure to check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast provider. Grind set on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! And we're back on the Chairman's Perspective. I'm really honored today to have Linda Phillips, Administrator of Elections, with us. You have a lot of work upcoming, uh, Linda. I hope you've been resting up. We've got the uh, presidential preference primary and county primaries coming up in March of 2020. Yeah, March 3rd. March 3rd. Um, early voting starts February 12th. So by the time this show airs, it will be a, it'll be too late to register for that election. But I know you get a lot of questions asked many times when someone's coming in for our primary, why they have to pick a party. Can you go through some of those commonly asked questions that I know you get all the time? Okay, well, that is definitely one of the questions. Um, The election in March is a primary election, and the purpose of a primary is for the political parties to select their candidates. 
So that's the reason that you have to pick a party. You neither pick the Republican or the Democratic ballot. Um, and that choice is not binding. You know, you pick the one that you believe you share their ideals with. But you don't have to vote for those people in the in the general election. Uh, and you can change your mind about your party in the next election. Okay. Let me ask you this. I know it's exciting for young people. I've, I've been out at the polls before, and it's really exciting to see that 18-year-old coming to the polls. They may have just graduated from high school, or they're coming back from college for the first time. They've got such excitement about voting for the first time. And then also, I've met World War II veterans that literally will get out of the car, get in a wheelchair, get in a walker. They will not miss the opportunity to vote. But for the great populace in Shelby County, we have so many people that didn't, do not choose to vote. How do we turn that around? And the challenges we have with voter participation in Shelby County, are, is the rest of the country experiencing the same dynamic? Yeah, it is, uh, it is a problem. Voter participation has been declining since the 60s. Now, part of that problem is, is mythical because... When we passed the Motor Voter Act, which did not allow states to purge voters from the rolls, the rolls started growing. So right now we have 575,000 registered voters in Shelby County, but I suspect if we sent a piece of mail to all of them, we'd get about 100,000 back. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So So there may be, let me ask you this, so there may be people on our rolls that are deceased, or those have been removed? No, we actually do a pretty good job of removing deceased voters. We get reports from uh, the Social Security Master Death Index, and we do remove people who have died. Now, one of the issues that we have is people who, we have some 117 and 118-year-olds on our voter registration rolls. They probably are no longer with us, but because we don't have Social Security numbers on registrations that old we can't know for sure why do you think the voter apathy what do you think the complaints are what do you hear you know you're really uh, an expert in the field of voting but why the apathy well i think it's a combination of things um people tend to come out and vote when they are interested in a candidate or they think their vote will make a difference now, if there's some really interesting research, though, that talks about having younger voters vote, get to, how to get them to vote. Sure. Um, because they are, you know, the 18 to 30 age range is our lowest participating right. group. But one of the things that researchers have found is if you get voters, you know, young voters, particularly in high school, and you show them how to vote as part of a class, and then if they vote in their first election that they are eligible, statistically, they are vastly more likely to become lifelong voters. Boy. So that education thing is key. You're listening to the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazuki Network. We're with, we're with Lee, Linda Phillips, who's our Administrator of our Elections. I think that's fascinating. Um, I, th- I think I need to do my homework when I'm SCS is in front of me, Shelby County Schools, and to see, do you, do you know right now inside our public schools, are we, do we discuss You know, when I was in school uh, here in Memphis, we actually had to take Tennessee history. I don't know if that's even required (laughs) anymore, but do you have any knowledge if we're we're doing that with the younger people? We are in some schools. Um, We just finished a program at Central High School that was organized by a parent, and every um, every class, every senior class that every senior had to take, they came into the library and we talked about voting and we got them registered to vote. Uh, We do contact every single high school, both public and private in Shelby County, in the spring and offer to come out and register their students. Oh, that's great. And that's important because a student needs to register in person so that they can get an absentee ballot if they go away to college. Under federal law... You have to, if you don't register in person, if you register by mail or you register on our online registration, then you have to vote in person your first time. Okay. So, um, but if we go out to you and we register you and we see, uh, yes, you are a real person, then you can vote absentee from college or from your job or the military or wherever you might be. That's really good to know. Let me ask you about, we have so many, especially in my district, we have a number of nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Um how does it work for someone who's retired living in a nursing home or an assisted living facility? How do they have the opportunity to vote? Well, we actually send bipartisan teams to all of the licensed nursing homes in Shelby County. Um, now, that's not to be consistent, confused with independent living. People who are living in 
elderly housing who are independent, they still need to vote early or go to their precinct polling place. But if you're in a licensed bed in a nursing home, we'll come to you. And do you bring the machines currently to those nursing homes? Um, How does that work? Well, we bring the team and we bring paper ballots for them. We found that bringing the machines is a difficult thing for people in a wheelchair to manage. They're just more comfortable with paper ballots. Gotcha. It, um, well, that's really good to know. I know we haven't, you know, again, I think our seniors are very vested in voting. Mm-hmm. So many p- people who served in the military have fought for the right to vote. Right. And um, that's really, really good information. So on the horizon, there's been a lot of community uh, conversation coming up. We've got a short segment this time, but we're going to talk about um, the future of where we go in terms of the investment into our voting machines the machines that we currently have do you are those machines the same ones that are throughout the country or are there new are there new opportunities that we're not uh, aware of well um, there are certainly different kinds of machines the state of Georgia who use the same machines we have has just replaced theirs oh, okay uh, with a ballot marking system from Dominion voting systems um, Dominion is a certified vendor in Tennessee and they did respond. Uh, we also got responses from ES&S, who has you know a variety of different systems we can look at, and uh, Heart InterCivic. So those are the three vendors that responded to our RFP. Okay. So there are not really 50, 60 voting <laughs> companies out there that you have a choice from. No. It doesn't sound like... No, there's really only about six nationwide, and many of them have segmented their business. So there's some that really work mostly in California and the West Coast. Uh, some that work mostly on the East Coast. So we, it, it, so we've ma- made great strides from uh, the uh, early 1900s when we were filling out a paper ballot and um, literally tabulating those for 40 hours or so. Yes, we definitely have made improvements. Okay. We're going to talk about those improvements in just a few minutes. You're listening to The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazukian Network. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazukian Network. Funking up your airwaves and jamming the good information in your ear. Once again, it's Funky Politics. Funky Politics. Funky Politics. We are back on the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazukian Network. I'm really honored to have our friend with us today, Linda Phillips, who is the Administrator of Elections in Shelby County. We've been talking about the upcoming elections. One thing I've always uh, wondered about is early voting. It seems to be really the deciding factor in many local elections. Um, So many people tend to come out for early voting. Tell us a little bit, uh, early voting there's plenty of opportunities in Shelby County to vote. It's a little over two weeks. How long does early voting last? Well, early voting for the presidential preference primary starts on February the 12th, and it ends uh, on the 25th, which is two days shorter than a typical early voting period because it's a presidential preference primary. Uh, what we find is that even in a regular election, about 60% of our voters will vote early. Wow. But in a preference presidential preference primary, that drops to about 30%, because an awful lot of people wait until election day to see who else drops out of the race. So on this upcoming, let me ask you this, uh, Linda, uh, on this upcoming presidential, so there's a chance that on the ballot, when they see all the nominees for president in the primary, there's a chance that someone may have dropped out that are, that's still on the ballot. That's right, yeah. Uh, the list of presidential um candidates was set in early December. Wow. And since then, uh, I know of at least three that have dropped out, and there may be more. I've been a little busy, so I haven't really followed that. (laughs) But y'all have to work so far ahead that actually the ballot will Mm -hmm. have people, again, that that are running for president that have dropped out. That have dropped out, yeah. Yeah, we have to, by law, mail military ballots 45 days prior to the election. Wow. So we that you know, because many of our military uh, are scattered across the world, and it takes time for them to get to them and then for them to get back to us. Well, having two full weeks to early vote, there's really no reason not to not to vote. Uh, do you think early voting is, is too long? Well, it, it can be. Um, you know, I think early voting has a tendency because it is such a long period that the better financed candidates have a better shot. 
which you know I guess would be true even if we didn't have early sure, voting. Sure. But uh, it's harder for an unknown to to staff you know have people doing their push cards at all of the early voting locations because there are twenty five of them. So on election day, it's typically seven in the morning till seven at night. Yes, we'll start at seven a.m. and the voting will end at seven p.m. Anybody in line at seven is allowed to vote, no matter how long it takes. So you know if there's 500 people in line at 7 o'clock, we're going to get them all voted. <laughs> so as long as you're in line by 7, a, mm-hmm. 7 a.m. 7 p.m. Se, excuse me. <laughs> yes. As long, you're, as, as long as you're in line at 7 p.m., you're guaranteed the opportunity to vote. Absolutely. It's been a while. I, I remember um, a, a presidential race or two back when we actually had people still standing in line at 7. But for the most part, um, it's a fairly quick and easy process. It is quick. Um, and, you know, it's a short ballot. So it really, you know, there's... Um, really only two races on the Democratic ballot, the president and the uh, general sessions court clerk. So mm-hmm. they, they can parties can nominate their candidates. The Republican ballot has those two races. And then they, the Republican Party in Tennessee elects their delegates to the national convention. Oh, that's right. The okay. Democratic Party selects their, their delegates in another manner. But again, a pretty short ballot. It's a ballot. pretty short ballot, yeah. It's really only, you know, from the time you check in and walk up to a machine, it's about a minute. <laughs> so it's going to take you longer to... It's going to wa- take you longer to check in and park your car. Right. <laughs> You're, again, we're so happy today to be updated on the upcoming elections with our administrative elections in Shelby County, Linda Phillips. Linda, can you remind everyone, um, we after that we've talked a lot about the primary and the county primary, but then in August... We're, we're back. You're back at it again with the <laughs> county general and the state and federal primary, correct? That's that, correct. That'll yeah. be August. So who will all be will be on that ballot well, in August? Well, on that, that ballot, there will be um, the primary election for one of the Tennessee United States senators. Okay. All of the Tennessee United States uh, congressmen, House of Representatives. The Tennessee uh, senators who are in the even districts and the all of the Tennessee representatives in the House. Wow. So and you can start picking up petitions for those on Monday, February 3rd. <laughs> wow. And then we've got the general election November 3rd. That'll be the big presidential yes, November that, 3rd. That'll be the presidential. Any um, any inside baseball relative to what you think turnout will be for this presidential? Uh, is there, I mean, I know you deal with experts in your field every day. Anything you're going to be surprised at? Or I don't think so. We're planning for a very high turnout in November. Um, we will be assuming that you all fund it. We will be having expanded early voting hours. Uh, instead of starting at 11, we'll start at 9. Okay. Just... Um, make sure that everybody can vote early. Um, and typically 60% of people will vote early in that November election. So let me ask you this. No matter what um, no matter what voting machines or process that the election board decides, will that be hopefully available by November 3rd? I hope so. I certainly do. Because I would really think voter confidence would be greatly improved. Because whatever system we purchase, it is going to have a paper backup. Right. So, and I know there's. If people want to learn just about the options, where's the again? Is it the best place to go? Is to go to your website? Um, well, actually, if they want to see uh, demonstrations from the certified systems in Tennessee, if they go to the oh. Tennessee Secretary of State's website, there are uh, videos posted from the certified manufacturers that show the systems that are available. Okay, so that's on Secretary Hargett's yeah. um, mm-hmm. website. Okay, yeah. well, he's a great friend of ours here in Shelby County. Yeah. So we'll drive some people to, to go to Secretary Hargett's website in Nashville. Um, any, any closing thoughts about voting? And I thought it was really interesting in your bio. Um, you have stated before that you believe voting is the most important thing anyone can do because it's their most fundamental right as Americans to vote. Absolutely. Tell me just a little bit more about that. Why do you b- believe so strongly in that? Well, I guess I was raised, um, you know, in in families that voting was extremely important because both of my grandmothers remember very vividly when women got the right to vote. Absolutely. And so, you know, they fought hard for that right. And, you know, back, you know, when I was little and it would be election day, I mean, they got dressed up. They put on hats and gloves and dressed like they were going to church and because voting was that important to right. them. And so that's the family I was raised in. You know, my grandfather firmly believed that if you didn't vote, you couldn't complain. <laughs> well, it's it's really true. We have a lot of really good elected officials in Shelby County. But, you know, from time to time, we might get sideways with an elected <laughs> official. But, you know, if you don't go and vote, you get what you 
mm-hmm. vote or don't vote for. Yeah, I was going to say, if you don't vote, I mean, you're really letting somebody else make that choice. And the other really thing about voting that I think is so important is everybody is equal. Well, your what a vote, great comment. Your vote counts just the same as anybody else's. It doesn't matter where you went to school, how much money you make. Right. Your vote is equal to everybody else's. Boy, we really need to remind everybody of that. I just want to thank everybody at the uh, Election Commission for all the work you're about to do, all the work you do do in Shelby County. Again, Linda, thanks for all you're doing. We've been talking with Linda Phillips today, Administrator of Elections for Shelby County. Please come back on the show and have us again. I want to hear about the results of our last (laughs) campaign and what we can learn from. Okay. Thank you so much, Linda. We'll be right back on the Kazuki Network on the Chairman's Perspective. with Tanya, presented by the Commercial Appeal. 20 minutes of the challenges and opportunities, you know, we face in Memphis, but also a lot of the things nationally that um, that, that concern me and that should concern other people as well. 20 with Tanya on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian. Thank you for listening to the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. Today it was a, a privilege, and we learned a lot from Linda Phillips, Administrator of Elections in Shelby County. We want to remind you that the, we've got three different elections in 2020 in Shelby County, March 3rd, August 6th, and November the 3rd. So get out to vote. You'll be regretful if you don't. Again, this has been the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. Please listen to the Kazookian Network and the Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian app or your favorite podcast provider. To all of our employees in Shelby County, thanks for your hard work, and we'll see you next time on the Chairman's Perspective. The Chairman's Perspective Podcast. Executive Producer, Shelby County Commission's Chairman, Mark Billingsley. Directed, produced, recorded, and distributed by Kazookian. Kazookian.